Hello, my name is Jeff Vetch. I'm a soil scientist and researcher at the University of Minnesota Southern Research and Outreach Center. My topic today is P and K application, band or broadcast. Why would, might we want a deep band P and K fertilizer? When soil tests P or K levels are low, that's a good time. It's more efficient. When we're in a strip till or no till system, it saves time and money in strip till and it has the potential to reduce the risk of runoff of phosphorus in both of those systems as well, banding versus broadcasting. It will minimize stratification of immobile nutrients from broadcast applications when you have reduced tillage. This is generally more important with potassium than it is with phosphorus, and that's because of the way K uptake is taken up by the plant and recycled through the plant in, with potassium compared to phosphorus. Fixation of P and K happens in, the, happens in the soil. P fixation is at either high pH soils or very low pH soils. K fixation is generally by clays and it's usually worse with illites and vermiculites, but also some with smectite clays. Illite clays are dominant in Southeast Minnesota and the smectites in South Central. Greater yields and fertilizer use efficiency has been shown by Reem and Lamb where they found banded K increased corn yield and ridge till, but it interacted with hybrids. One hybrid uh, showed a response, one did not. And Malarino has also shown a, be a benefit to banding K compared to broadcasting in corn. The economics, I think, is a consideration. Can we use less fertilizer? This would be potential to increase our return on investment on fertilizer. Probably most likely where P and K soil test levels are low, like we talked about at the beginning. And this might be a good opportunity or a good uh, method when we got rented land where the soil test levels have been run down or maybe when commodity prices are low and we don't wanna spend a lot of input costs on fertilizer. Our current U of M fertilizer guidelines suggest a rate reduction when using band application compared to broadcast, but only for corn, there's no adjustment for soybean. In the table on the right, we have the soil test levels, very low, low, a medium, and the ranges in concentration for Bray P1 and Olson P at those levels. And right below that, we have the guideline, fertilizer guidelines for band versus broadcast in pounds of P205 per acre. And you can see in the very low and low categories, we recommend a reduction of 50% or one half of the application rate in band versus broadcast. And as we get to the medium soil test level, then that diminishes and as the high category, it diminishes even more. And the same is true for soil test K. In very low and low situations, we have a reduction that's nearly 50%. And in the medium soil test level, it's a little bit less than that and it becomes even less in the high soil test level. So what are the research questions that we're interested in? Band applications usually have a greater fertilizer use efficiency, but are these large rate reductions for band compared to broadcast valid or are they wise? Will they hold up in the long term? Currently, North Dakota is our only neighboring state with a rate reduction and their re reduction does not reach a 50% reduction. It's only one third. So if your broadcast application was 60 pounds, your banded application would be 40. Some band and broadcast research has been done with starter bands, but not deep bands. This is most common with liquid P starters. Are these deep bands as effective and as efficient as these liquid or in furrow starter or other starter bands? Randall et al. Uh, in 2001 found a, a study at looking at phosphorus in strip till that a deep band that was placed in the strip was similar in yield to in furrow or pop up and also similar to a broadcast application where the broadcast was at a 2x rate of the strip till or in furrow application. However, in the full width tillage, either uh, conservation tillage or conventional tillage, the broadcast treatment was better than the band in that same study. Previous research has compared broadcast at an X rate to a reduced rate or a half X rate in bands. This is kind of the derivation of this rate reduction in our fertilizer guidelines. But what is the rock crop response and yield response if we use equal rates? And does it vary by soil test? Is this only effective when soil tests are very low or 
as our rate guidelines suggest, as soil tests get higher, it's not as important. And then our band application is more profitable. And this will probably need some time to determine that. The research sites we used were at both Waseca and Rochester. The Waseca site is a Nicollet Webster clay loam glacial till soil, and it's got tile drainage. The Rochester site is a Mount Carroll silt loam, and it's a loess soil and it's well drained. There were two research plots at each of these sites. So there was a phosphorus and a potassium study done side by side at each of these locations. And at each of these locations, the previous fertilizer treatments had created replicated plots with a nice range in soil test levels. At Rochester, the range was from two to 30 part per million Bray P and 52 to 249 for ammonium acetate K. And these are based on soil samples that were taken in the spring of 2018 or summer of 2018. At Waseca, the range was from three to 40 part per million Bray and 63 to 200 K. These individual plots were 20 feet wide. So we split them into two 10 foot plots and we compare band on one side and broadcast on the other. And the band is placed directly below the row, about five to six inches, just deep enough so that it won't be disturbed by, by one past spring preplant tillage. The band and broadcast fertilizer was applied in November of 2019 at Waseca, and it wasn't applied till April of 2020 or preplant at Rochester. And that was, we didn't want to put it out there and then have to do tillage to incorporate the broadcast at the Rochester site. We wanted to hold off on the preplant tillage until just before planting. So let's look at some pictures of the visual differences that we saw between comparisons of band and broadcast K at Waseca. And this was, picture was taken on June 23rd. In this left photo, this person standing here in the back is splitting this plot. The left side was broadcast and had 60 pounds of K2O per acre or 100 pounds of potash. The right side was the banded treatment. You can see the banded treatment has better color, more leaf area index, and it's much taller corn than over here on the left. The soil test in these two pairs were, was 90 part per million. Over here on the right, we have another pair, a different plot. This cover for a pail splits the two plots. This is the broadcast side again on the left and the banded side on the right. And this soil test level for these two plots was 85 part per million. And again, we applied 60 pounds of K2O. And you can see that there's much more uh, smaller corn, more unevenness, and more K deficiency compared to on the right, where we have much taller corn, much greater leaf area. This picture is the same one I just showed you that was in the previous slide on the right. It's the same pair of plots, but it's two days later, and when the sun angle was at a different, it was behind me instead of not in my face. Here on the left is the broadcast side, and you can see the unevenness and the uh, minimal amount of leaf area index and height of corn compared to the banded side here on the right. And also this inlet picture shows the K deficiency in the leaves that was very evident over here on the left. And you can see it on these burning edges of these leaves here and here and all through the plot compared to on the banded picture on the right. This is band versus broadcast K at Rochester. And this picture was taken a little bit earlier on June 12th. Um, again, on the left, we have the broadcast and this inlet showing severe K deficiency. This treatment was interesting or this four row plot because this row here is row two and it looked very poor as did row, part of row one, but then it got better. This row doesn't look quite so bad, but then this row also is showing K deficiency. You compare that to the band treatment over here on the right. And generally the corn is not great, but it definitely was more consistent and had minimal to no deficiency symptoms for potassium compared to the photo on the left, the broadcast treatment on the left. This picture is from Waseca on July 2nd, and this is from the phosphorus study. It, it received 45 pounds of P205 per acre applied in a band on the left and broadcast on the right. The fiberglass rod that's white and painted orange is dividing the two plots. And again, you can see much greater growth, more leaf area, and how little sun is penetrating the crop canopy or hair where the banded treatment was on the left compared to on the right. And also 
The soil test level in this site is very low. This is a Bray P of two part per million prior to application of fertilizer on the left and three part per million on the right. A, a, a very low soil test that you would not find in most fields, in Southern Minnesota. Let's look at some of the results from the studies in 2020. Again, we're gonna focus on the band versus broadcast comparison for potassium in fertilized plots. So when we look at this comparison here and these two banded versus broadcast, we're gonna focus on, this is the main effect averaged across several study or several um, comparison, comparisons that either receive 45 or 60 pounds of K2O as potash or OO60. So we look at the soil test prior to the study application or prior to the application. So the soil test from June of 2019, you see that the banded K and the broadcast treatments had a very similar soil test. They were paired comparisons side by side. The ear leaf K is numerically greater for the banded treatment than the broadcast, but was not statistically different. And neither was the yield, even though there's a four bushel numeric difference that was not a significant difference at Wasika. Now these two treatments cannot necessarily statistically be compared to these because this is a, a group of several uh, treatments compared. This is just an individual pair. This treatment receives 60 pounds of K2O per acre broadcast and it's received that ever since the corn cropping year of 2012. So it's an annual application. So it has a higher soil test level, 121 versus these which are down around 100. The ear leaf K was similar to these and the yield was actually similar as well. This treatment has received 120 pounds of K2O per acre broadcast annually since 2012 or 200 pounds of potash per acre. The soil test level is considerably greater than the 60. Look at how the ear leaf K concentration increases dramatically compared to the 60 or these band versus broadcast treatments that have only received one application over the last few years. Yield wise, this yield is greater than the 60, but not tremendously greater than the banded K treatment that received only 60 pounds compared to this 120 over a period of several years. At Rochester, again, we'll focus on this comparison of banded K versus broadcast, again, at 45 or 60 pounds and an average across several treatments or shovel treatment comparisons. The soil test level was actually pretty similar in June of 2019 as it was here in Waseca, down around 103, 106. Ear leaf K was slightly greater or numerically greater with the band, similar to the Waseca site, but not statistically different. But the yields in this case were different. The banded K yielded six bushels more than the broadcast um, with the same rate averaged across multiple comparisons. When we look at the 60 pound broadcast annually, it had a soil test of 119 compared to around 103 to 106. Its ear leaf K was greater than these, but its yield was basically the same. When we look at the 120 broadcast annually since 26 or 2012, the soil test now is considerably greater, even much so, more so than at Waseca. And we've really built the soil test here at, Was or at Rochester. And the and as similar to Wasika, the ear leaf K is much greater than it is in any of these other treatments, but the yields again are similar and not greater than the banded K treatment, which had a lower soil test and received only 60 pounds of K2O or an average of 60 or 45, depending upon the treatment. So to summarize at Rochester, the yield response, we saw yield response to fertilizer placement. We did not at Wasika. And that band K was greater than broadcast and band K at 60 was similar to the annual broadcast at 120. So some evidence that maybe you can reduce fertilizer rates with a band compared to broadcast. So the previous treatments were fertilized. These are the unfertilized treatments that are also in this same study. This is the effect of soil test K on grain yield on the left and ear leaf K on the right in unfertilized plots in the same year in the same studies. So we got soil test values in K here on the x-axis and we've got our yields on the y-axis at each given soil test. For the Rochester site, 
you see the yields are in circles here and they're all kind of on the same level as far as yield goes. So even though there's a range in soil tests from maybe 150 up to 185, there was no yield differences. It's likely that this soil test level was above the critical value at the Rochester site in this year. <clears throat> at Waseca, the triangles, lower soil test levels down around 120 to 135 part per million, generally saw a little bit lower yields than some of the higher soil test levels but not tremendous differences, but modest differences. Over here on the right, we had the same soil test levels from here, same data, but now regressed against ear leaf K on the y-axis. And what do you see at Rochester? The circles you see as soil test K increases, ear leaf K increases in a linear relationship. And pretty much the same is true for Waseca. What's interesting is that some of these ear leaf Ks are pretty low. In fact, in the literature, the critical concentration for ear leaf K at R1 is 1.7 to 2.5. That's the shaded box. None of these measurements for ear leaf K in this study were into that shaded category. They all fell right below it, either very close or significantly below it. So this tells me that if you're using ear leaf K at mid-season to make an adjustment, on your fertilizer K applications. You need to be a little uh, cautious as here at Rochester, there was no yield difference and only a marginal yield difference at Waseca as K, soil test K increased. And it was only occurred up to about 150 part per million. There was no advantage of going above that. This is band versus broadcast comparisons for phosphorus in the fertilized plots. These treatments either had 30 or 45 pounds of P2O5 per acre as triple superphosphate. When we look at the Waseca site, we have soil tests taken in June prior to the application of the first band versus broadcast comparisons and after in June of 2020 versus June of 2019. We have ear leaf phosphorus and grain yield. At Waseca, there's no differences in any of these parameters. There was no response from band to broadcast for any parameters at Waseca. At Rochester, we didn't see a yield difference between band and broadcast, but we did see that the broadcast treatment had a little bit greater ear leaf phosphorus than banded. And we also noticed that in the soil tests that were taken after the first application, the banded treatments were statistically greater than the broadcast. And this makes sense, but it does bring up a challenge with banding versus broadcasting is trying to get soil test data that represents the field accurately. The other thing to note is the leaf phosphorus at Rochester here is much greater than it is at Waseca, which is very interesting. When we look at the effect of soil test phosphorus on grain yield and ear leaf P in the unfertilized plots for when we look at the Rochester site, the circles, there's a lot of circles and they're kind of all on the same line. Even at these low soil test levels of six or seven, eight part per million, less than 10, no yield advantage to having greater soil tests. And these are an unfertilized plot. So it's just, the crop is just responding to the soil test or the amount of pea in the soil, in the soil itself. At Waseca, we got one treatment down here that had a soil test of about six part per million and it saw a pretty decent yield penalty, maybe as much as 10 to 15 bushels compared to these other treatments. So interesting, if you think about fertilizing, say with nitrogen, if you didn't put any on and you were gonna rely on the soil, you'd have a huge yield penalty. But with P and K, you can have some low soil test levels and still only have a marginal yield penalty. And in these data, once we got around 10 part per million, there really was no advantage to having a higher soil test level for phosphorus. When we look at the effect of soil test phosphorus versus uh, ear leaf phosphorus, we see that most of them fall within the critical concentration box, except for this one sample. And that was interesting because that is the same sample as over here where we saw a yield penalty. The soil tests for these samples were taken from the June 2020 samples, not the previous ones, the 2019. So what are observations from the year one? 
We did see growth differences. They were observed both at, at Wasika for both P and K and also at Rochester, but only for potassium. And whenever we saw growth or early growth or bigger differences in the plants, the band was always better than the broadcast. We did observe K deficiency symptoms. Almost all of them were in the broadcast treatments, especially when we had very low soil tests or low soil test levels, either P or K, but in this case, potassium. We did see a small yield response to banded K compared to broadcast K at Rochester, which agrees with Ream and Lamb and also with Malarino. No yield response to P placement in either of these sites in 2020. The economics, can we get by using less fertilizer? Maybe, but this is just year one of the study. We're gonna need at least one, maybe two more years to make a good call on that. The last thing I'll mention is plant tissue testing. I'm gonna caution people, don't overreact to low or marginal case tissue tests. As you could see in this study, it may not even result in a yield difference. There are differences in hybrids and environments and that can affect tissue tests as well. Interestingly, the tissue test for phosphorus at, at Rochester was much greater than it was at Waseca, a range of, across a range of soil test levels. So environment and maybe hybrid differences do make a difference. I want to acknowledge the funding for this project from Ag Fertilizer Research and Education Council and also from the U of M Ag Experiment Station. I also like to thank Dan Kaiser and Kyle Holling for their contributions to this project. My contact information is over there on the right, and thank you for listening.